Um, and, and loving people, I don't consider myself a pastor. I just consider myself a person that loves people and just wants to love on them. So, so today, I'm not, I'm not preaching today. I'm, I'm having a conversation. Um, so what really encouraged me a couple of weeks ago, my dad was like, every single sermon doesn't have to have a certain um, criteria. It doesn't have to sit a certain flow. Uh, he said, most people think that you have to have um, a bunch of verses, and then you have to talk about those verses and preach on that. Um, and that really just opened my mind. To, and I think it was just Holy Spirit allowing me just to be myself. So um, I'm just grateful that Holy Spirit used my dad to tell me that I can just be me. So today we're just going to have a conversation. Um, and to get my nerves out, I just want to ask you guys a couple questions. Raise your hand if you think it is okay to listen to Christmas mu music on November 1st. <laughs> Every single person in here except for you. <laughs> um, in 55 days till Christmas, I've already been listening to Christmas music. I put it on in the car this morning, and I am excited. Um, so I also want to ask you another a weird question, and now we'll, we'll save it to the end. All right, but I, thank you, uh, Jamal and Lisa. I call my dad Jamal. If anybody knows my dad, you know that we call him Jamal. Uh, that's what we've called him my whole entire life since I was in like middle school is Jamal. Um, but I, I do want to talk about what I might have uh, started a conversation on tonight. And recently, uh, everybody that stood up that came to support me, we have a small group called Committed. And in this small group, we have really just been focusing on the power and work of Holy Spirit recently. And if, if, if you um, are a young person or you know anyone that's young and, and just wants to be a part of a group, come talk to any of us over here because we would love to have you and we would love to connect with you. And, 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 and when I mean that we've been seeing the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I mean that like we know a kid that came one night to committed and his back has been hurting for months and months and we prayed for him and immediately when we prayed for him, all of his pain was gone. Um, we, we've, got, we've got 20 some kids that are committed and that um, come to a Bible study every single Saturday night, um, 20 some kids which they could be doing anything they want to do on a Saturday, but they come to, um, to learn about God and just be in the presence of Holy Spirit. And also, um, we have about 20 kids on Wednesday nights after church. We go to our friend Kara Brown's house, and we just pray. It, it, we call it our Wednesday night prayer meeting, and that's literally all we do. We just pray and seek the face of the Lord. And I just want to give honor where honors due, and I want to say thank you guys for all coming and supporting me. I love you all very much. Um, but speaking about Holy Spirit, um, I, I, I kind of thought about maybe we can do Reformation Station because Dr. Lynn Howes was here and he was talking about the Reformation of the Holy Spirit and how um, at, at the end of this year and going into the next year, we're going to see the biggest move of the Holy Spirit that we have ever seen. And we're seeing it in our group. So I'm believing that we're going to see it in our nation and our world. And so I, I thought maybe talk about Reformation Station and Holy Spirit Reformation. And then, of course, um, I thought about talking about Graves into Gardens, but I'm not talking about that today. Um, Graves into Gardens is my favorite song ever, and if you know me then, like, that is my anthem. I can listen to that song all day long, and it still gives me pump up. I could kick over a chair, do a backflip, whatever you want. Um, that's what I could do, but I'm not talking about that. Um, but I, I was going to talk about what to do in a valley. And this is a sermon by uh, Jabin Chavez. And if you've ever heard of him, go look him up. Um, it's called What to Do in a Valley. It is, I'm sorry, Papa, one of the best sermons I've ever heard in my life. And Papa's the goat. He has, I got him a, uh, a trophy in his office and it says the goat, the greatest of all time. But this man, I'm telling you, wow. He just taught, he uses Ezekiel 37 and... Um, they're, they're in the valley, if you know that story, and in Ezekiel, um, God takes Ezekiel to this valley, and it's covered in dry bones and with all this death, and um, God asks Ezekiel, um, can these dry bones come alive? And Ezekiel says, only you know, God, and then he takes it from the dry bones, and, and he, he says that all you have to do is prophesy to your situation, and it can be changed just like that. And then after you prophesy to that situation, you see in Ezekiel 37 that the bones become sinews, and they become skin, and the, the bones come alive. So when you're prophesying to your situation in that valley, 
you bring life. And I was going to talk about that, and I was fired up about it, um, but I, I didn't because this is what happened. I, I really liked just the phrase, what to do in a valley. So I, when I was getting ready to write that, this is what Holy Spirit said to me. He says, what do you do when the valley is you? So what do you do when, when you're the valley that you're facing? What do you do when that situation in your life, the thing that's up against you in your life, that mountain, is yourself? Um, and my response was like, I don't know. I'm 20 years old. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a lot. And that's another thing. I'm not Papa and I'm not my dad. So today is going to be practical and basic as you can get. Um, this is nothing super spiritual. It's just real and practical. Um, so this is what I'm going to ask. Has anyone ever gotten in their own way? Uh, have you ever been the valley you were facing? Yeah. So this happens to all of us because we're people. And let me just tell you, it is okay. It is okay that you face yourself. It's okay that you face valleys. It's okay that you face situations. And I just want to thank each and every single person in this room for being honest. And I want to thank you for being vulnerable and real. Not everybody knows each other in this place, but you were honest and vulnerable enough to say, yeah, I face myself sometimes, and that's awesome. Um, and that means that you're ready. And, and what are you ready for? You're ready to be you. So today's title, if you can throw it up there, is what to do when you're not you. So if you're a note taker, you get automatic access to heaven faster than anyone else. So take notes today. All right, let's pray. Uh, Holy Spirit, thank you so much for just allowing me to have this opportunity just to have a conversation with my church family and with my committed family and with my real family. Um, Lord, not all my family is here today, but um, <laughs> I'm thankful that um, you've given me this opportunity and these people in my life to get to this spot. I just ask that you would use me today and that you would help me and that someone's life would be touched. In Jesus' name, amen. I told you I was going to cry. <laughs> Can't help it. That's just who I am. Thank you. Uh, got it from my mama, I guess. All right. All right, I want to start off by saying a couple of things. Number one, you are already doing better than you think you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're facing. You're already doing better than what you think. Um, your situation could be much worse. A lot of people face a lot of things. And the situation that you think you're going through is minuscule to someone else's. But that doesn't mean that your situation is hard. It, it is hard but you don't need to compare it because your situation could be so much worse. I also want to remind you that you could be doing so much worse. What we're talking about today is facing yourself. You could be in a spot where you're doing much worse than you're doing right now. What you're doing right now is already putting you in the steps to be doing better in the future. You could be doing worse. You couldn't be here today. You couldn't be receiving this message. But thank God you're here because you're doing better than you think you are. Number two, I'm not here to tell you what you have been doing wrong. That's not my job. I'm not here to tell you what you've been doing wrong. Um, I'm not Holy Spirit. Um, I'm also not your mother. The people that know you best are your mother and Holy Spirit, and I'm neither of those things. Um, I'm also not you. See, see, this is a message for all of us. That we need to take this message and apply it to our lives. So when, when you're listening to me, to me today, allow Holy Spirit to speak to you, to speak to your situation, and think about yourself and what you're going through. It's not my job to tell you what you're going through. You already know that. So uh, you know what you're struggling with. We all struggle with something. We will all continue to struggle with some things. But you know what you're struggling with. You know what you're up against. You know what you're doing that is making you feel like you're facing a mountain. And um, I, I love this quote that my dad says. It's, it's, we're not here to point out the sin in you. We're here to point out the sun in you. And that's one of my favorite quotes that he gives. Um, because we're not sin conscious. We're sun conscious. We're, we're here to, to, to remember our identity. We're here to see the sun, Jesus in us. And whatever we're facing, even when it's ourself, we're going to look at our inner self and get through it. And that right there is what we have to start with. We have to start with us. 
um, and what's inside of you and who's inside of you. So I'm going to ask you this question. Who's ready to get back to the right you? Fred, thank you for raising your hand. All right, number one, it's time to have an identity crisis. Um, and, and it's time to have an identity crisis. If you're, if you're taking notes, write point one down, identity crisis. So here's, a, here's just a quick story. This is one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's about a son. Well, what were we talking about? We're being son conscious, not sin conscious. So this movie's about a son. The son loses his father. The son is manipulated mentally and emotionally. The son grows up being taught completely the wrong way a son should be taught by two loving parents. The son fakes who he is until his past comes back into his life. The son runs away and begins to hear this voice. And, and, and when do we usually run away in life? When we feel shame, when we feel guilt. Just point that out there. So his past comes back into his life. He runs away and begins to hear a voice. The voice calls him to the water and he looks down into it. And what does he see? He sees a reflection. He doesn't see just any reflection. He sees his daddy. The son looks in the water, completely lost, completely devastated, has no clue who he is or why he is himself. But what does he know? He knows his father. He looks up in the sky, and a voice from heaven says, You are more than you have become. Look inside yourself and remember who you are. That's the Lion King. That's a kid's movie. <laughs> so, and, and, and I think it's exactly right. We, we've, we've got to take this simple teaching from a kid's movie and apply it to our lives. Mufasa is right. Mufasa is Simba's dad. I, I personally believe that 80 to 90% of the times that I mess up, it's because I've forgotten my identity. I've forgotten who I am. I've forgotten who my father is. Um, so what's your identity? Who, who, who are you? Who are you? Um, you're a king's kid. That's something that we teach and committed all the time. We probably say it every single week. You're a king's kid. You're a king's kid. You're a king's kid. Um, so let's go to Galatians 3.26, and this is what it says. Does anybody have a real Bible? If you've got a real Bible, hold it up. Shame. Jesus only loves you if you have a real Bible. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But this is what Galatians 3.26 says. You all become true tr children of God by faith in Jesus, the anointed one. That means you're royal, just like Simba was. Simba forgot that he was royal. He, he was royal. You're royal. You're holy. Say that. A lot of people don't believe that. Say, I am holy. You are holy. You are made righteous through Jesus and you're forgiven. And I, I think that's one thing that we always have to remember. And I think that's one thing that we take granted for. We, we just go through life and we're just living life, but we forget that we've already been forgiven of everything that we can do and have already done or will do. Remember today that when you're facing yourself, remember you're forgiven. And I love this quote by Levi Lusco. I love it. The best kind of crisis you can have is an identity crisis where, the, where you begin the process of learning who you truly are. Do you know who you truly are? You're truly a king's kid. That's the foundation and the basis of every single thing you do in every single part of your life. The foundation of your life is a king's kid, period. You cannot build anything off of anything else except for being a child of the king. That's it. So the next time you're stepping over your own feet, the next time you're getting in your own way, be Simba. Allow Holy Spirit to remind you who you are. Everybody say it with me. I'm a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. Let's all say, the, uh, this, this is awesome. I, I, I forgot that this was in my notes. And this morning, I, I, was, I was in the bathroom getting ready, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do awful. Like, like, I, I, like I, I mess up every single day. Like, I, like I, there's nothing I can do. Like, this is going to be awesome, awful. But then Holy Spirit reminded me of these things that I'm trying to remind you guys of. I am loved. I am chosen, I am called, I am equipped. So I, I had to do this already this morning. I was facing myself, and Bailey reminded me last night, you got to be positive. you got to tell yourself, the person that you're facing, who you are. You've got to be positive. So when you're facing yourself, like I was facing myself this morning, I had to say, hey, I am loved. 
I'm loved by God. I can do this because God loves me, and guess what? I'm chosen. He chose me to speak today. He ch- well, out of everyone in this congregation, even my papa including, who did he choose to speak on this very day? Me. I'm chosen. I was chosen and called and appointed for a certain time. And that's number three. I am called. What was I called? A son. That's my foundation. I am a son. I'm also called to love people and help people and have conversations with people to encourage them. And remember what? Your foundation is built on God. You are a son of God or a daughter of God. And I am equipped. How am I equipped? I'm equipped with the Holy Spirit in me. I'm not the one talking. Holy Spirit is using me, speaking through me, bypassing my brain and emotions, and speaking out of me. That's, that's why am I equipped. I'm equipped with the Holy Spirit in me. So let's all say these out loud. I am loved. I am chosen. I am called. I am equipped. Once you remember that your identity is only in Christ, you'll be on the right track to being you. And I almost forgot, and I think this is the best part of the movie. Um, Mufasa re- reminded Simba who he was, a son, a child of the king. Mufasa took Simba's shame away. He, he, took, he took his wrong identity of being a bug eater, someone who's in, in the, the deep part of the forest where no one thinks about, and he gave him his identity back, and what happened? He reminded him he was a king's kid. He was a king's kid. And what happened? Simba went back home and began to be his true self and saved Pride Rock. He went back into what? His calling. His calling of a king's kid. And he went back home and he took back Pride Rock from Scar, who took away everyone's identity of being king's kids. So he went back and he restored and he uh, reminded everyone, hey, I'm a king's kid, and you guys are all underneath me. So when you have the, oh, I didn't even write this in my notes. When, when you're a king's kid and you're walking out in that mentality that you're a king's kid, all the people that are following you are going to rem- remember, oh, he's a king's kid. What else am I? I'm also a king's kid, and they're going to follow you. And you're going to restore other people's life because you know who you are. When you allow the king to tell you who you are, then you're on the right track to being the real you. We've got to remember who we are. We've got to remember who we are. A king's kid. That's who we are. Plain and simple. Number two, um, what are your boundaries? So this is a question for you. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not here to point out the wrong things you're doing. That's not my job. Um, But... I, we all know that we do things that we don't want to do. We, we all, we all, it's, it's like Paul said, um, sometimes the spirit's willing, but the flesh is just in the way, and we, we, just, we just make bad decisions because we're human. Um, but to, to better understand this point, I'm going to tell on myself. Um, I've had to create boundaries in, in, in multiple places in my life, and one of my boundaries is that I cannot be too attached to the game of football. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my, my friends are laughing, but it, I'm serious. Um, I, I, I Playing or watching the game of football, I cannot get too attached to it. For some reason, my mind thinks that it's life or death. Like, like if I don't win, like someone's going to put a gun to my head, and that's it. Like, it, my team that's, that's playing or I'm playing it, like it's life or death, and that's it. Um, and there have been times when we've played football with all my friends, and I wanted to win so bad that they would, they would just hand me the ball and they would make me run over each and every single person that came after me. And then, then I would get so mad that they would give me the ball. And everybody knows what a stiff arm is, right? Okay, well, because I, I wanted to win so bad, I turned my stiff arm into a fist. So every single time that I would run with the ball and someone tried to tackle me, they were getting a fist in the chest. And then they wouldn't tackle me anymore. <laughs> So there have been multiple times that I have acted a complete fool when, when, when WVU lost a game. Jonathan, I know you're watching. One of the first times I went to Oklahoma, WVU got stomped on by Oklahoma State, and I cried my eyes out because, because these 20-some-year-old kids were playing a game for fun, but I thought it was the end of the world. So I, I lost my mind, and I say these things... Um, because I, sh- I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be yelling. Um, I, I yell at helpless kids who can't hear me. Like, when it comes down to it, high school football players, college football players, they're just kids. 
but I yell at them like they're a piece of trash outside. That's, that's, doing, that's doing something for me just to boost my ego. Um, and I yell at refs who have lives. Like, it's not just me. I know all of you guys do it. Braden, you're smiling. We, we, we yell at refs all the time and call them trash, but they're just doing their job. I'm preaching to myself, but I'm sorry. Um, but, but this is one of my boundaries because I know I'm not supposed to treat people this way. I, I know that these people are real people. They have a heart. They have a soul, and they matter. And I need to have this boundary in my life to say, all right, Matthew, if my foundation is a king's kid, they also are a king's kid. And I have to treat them like I'm going to treat myself. And that's not who I am. The, the person that yells, that screams, that cries, that says things that I shouldn't say at a sporting events, that's not who I am. I, I'm a person who loves people first, like I said at the beginning. And, and I have to have this boundary in my life so that I can remember to love them and treat them the right way. So for me, Holy Spirit has set up this boundary so I can still be myself and have fun. So let me ask you this, um, and, and write this down. Where are the places you aren't yourself? What we're talking about today, what to do when you're not you. If you're not you, what are you doing? Who are you with? Where are you when you're not yourself? Where do you go that makes you act up or act different? So, so, there, there's, so many, there's so many places that we go and, and we do things with, and, and it's not just people. There's places that we go. And, and it makes us act different. We put, on a, we put on not just a physical mask, but we put on an emotional mask, and, and we wear this mask, and we act different, and we face ourselves. So it's a constant battle of, is this who I am, or do I have to act this way? Um, and, and you just act different. And this is the final one. Who are the people you are with that make you talk different? See, our, my dad taught us months ago that the kingdom of God is voice activated. So if, if we're talking different, like, like we're not kingdom minded and we're not a king's kid, our whole entire life is based off our thoughts and then what comes to our heart and then what comes out of our mouth. So if you're, if you're speaking death, if you're speaking negativity, if you're just talking different, ugly, negative, nasty words you're going to end up acting different and then that then you're then you're going to be the person that you don't want to be. So so what are you doing that is making you talk different? I'm only asking you this because I'm trying to make you think where and what should be my boundaries. Um and, and I cannot tell you your boundaries, that's not my job. So so right now if you're taking notes, make a star and remind yourself this week to ask Holy Spirit what are my boundaries? What are you going to do and help me to make boundaries? Because my, my dad um, taught two weeks ago that Holy Ghost is a compass. And, and on a compass, there is direction and there's boundaries. And, and Holy Spirit's going to guide and direct us, but he's also going to keep us in those boundaries so that we can be doing the right thing and being the person that he wants us to be because he knows who we truly are. Um, so just make sure that you ask um, Holy Spirit what boundaries you need to follow. And it's just like any relationship you set, uh, there's boundaries. And, and, and there's boundaries because you care for one another. I'm in a relationship, and we have boundaries because we care for one another, and we know that it's biblical, that that's the correct thing to do. You have to set up boundaries so that you can survive and have a pure and great relationship. And, and we, we only do this because why? One, Holy Spirit wants the best version of you. And, and, and I honestly want to be the person that he's called me to be. Um, and, and this is the one thing that we have to remember while we talk um, today is that boundaries are biblical and boundaries are built. Uh, boundaries build a better you. So, so when you allow these boundaries to be put in your life, it's building a better you. Do you, you want to be the best version of yourself? Build boundaries in your life because then it's going to build a better you. See, see it's not about perfection. It's all about progression. And, and if we're going to progress and we're going to try to continue to get better, we have to have those boundaries in our life. We look at 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, yeah, you can do whatever you want to do, but just because you can do whatever you want to do doesn't mean it's right for you. you. You have to set up those boundaries so that you can be with the Father and you can be doing His will. And, and you just know that, hey, this is who I'm supposed to be. This is who I'm called to be. These boundaries are set in my life for a reason. Yes, I can do those things, but is it going to align with who I want to be and who the Father wants me to be? 
All right, number three, and we're almost done. I'm a, I'm a fast talker. I said it's going to be pretty practical and um, simple. So number three, spend time with your beloved. Um, and I, I know this is super cliche, and everyone's like, yeah, you have to spend time with God, and it, well, duh. But this, this is simple, and, and why do we use cliches, and why do we use things that are oversaid? Because they work. If, if it's called cliche, obviously it works because why would it be so overused? Um, and, and I don't think I could sit here and speak about this myself if I hadn't gone through these things myself. And about two weeks ago, um, in about a year, I'll, I'll even say this, about a year ago, I was in a depression in that like I just didn't want to wake up out of bed and I lost a lot of weight. But the thing is, is that as soon as I started spending time with the Lord, what did he do? He reminded me of my identity. Then he put boundaries in my life and guided me like a compass back to him, back to spending time with him, and look where I'm at now. So, so, uh, so if, if I didn't go through that a year ago, I wouldn't be here because he had to take me through that and say, hey, you haven't been spending time with me. Start spending time with me. I'll show you who you really are. I'll show you what you're going to do. I'll put the boundaries in your life so that you can be happy and restored and look where you are now. But two weeks ago, I felt empty. I felt numb. I felt confused and just lost. And my mind was sick and it made me, me feel sick and it made me act um, sick to the people I loved. When we were playing football the other day, I hit Braden in the face with a football, and I was just, I was just, wasn't being myself, um, and I was just confused. But as soon, listen to this, as soon as I turned to my father and spent some time with him, the tears flew down my face, and my heart was glowing, because, because just like Simba, Holy Spirit took me back to the water. He showed me the reflection. I didn't see myself, because I'm not myself I'm his. I was bought with a price. He's inside of me, so he showed me himself, and now, and now I'm back to being me again. So I think we have to get to the point in our lives where intimacy with the Father has to be intentional, and, and, and that's something that Committed has been talking about the last week. We've got to be more intentional in our life. We have to be more intentional with who we talk to and what we do and being in the moment, and especially being intentional in intimacy with the Father. And this is a question. Um, how can we take our husband and wife, girlfriend and boy, boyfriend out to eat, or we'll plan these intimate activities with them, and we'll spend hours and hours intimately um, making out plans, but we won't take hours or minutes or seconds to intentionally plan out time to spend with our father? So if you want to get over yourself uh, and go back to being you, it's time for some intimacy. Um, and, and, I, and, and we, we get a bad rap on intimacy, intimacy sometimes because a lot of people are like, eh, being intimate with the Lord, that's kind of weird. Well, no, he created you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And, and why would you not want to be with the one who made the world and made you and knows you more than anyone else? And, and I think the Lord knows who you are and he created you and he created this whole thing we're doing right now, which is called life. He, he created this. He created this exact, he, I'll say it like this. He intentionally created this exact second and moment and planned each and every single person's life to be in this exact moment just because he loves you that much. Just, just think about that. He intentionally planned all this to happen for each and every single's life. To be right here, to learn about being intentional with him. So if you think he'll be intentional to place all these people in one room at one time, how much more intentional is he going to be for you when it's just a one-on-one -on -one relationship? That was pretty good. Thank you. Uh, so listen to this. Uh, Song of Songs 1-2. Let him smother me with kisses, his spirit kiss divine. So kind are your caresses. I drink them in like the sweetest wine. Um... My dad preached a couple months ago on the Garden of God series, and it was amazing. And he, and he taught, and if you have not watched that, go on YouTube to Grace Life WV, shameless plug, and go and watch that series. It's so good. Uh, but he taught on the spirit kiss. And, and what is the spirit kiss? It's, it's nothing gross. It's, it, it's, it's something completely intimate and amazing and will blow your mind. But the spirit kiss is literally the breath of life that God blew into Adam to create life. And this is my personal belief. I believe every single time you inhale and exhale, he's giving you a spirit kiss 
again. He's breathing life back into you, and you're breathing it out into his creation. Um, and a lot of the times when we're not ourselves, it's because we're tired. Um, something that Committed has been working on me is that I have to rest. I'm a perfectionist, and I want everything, and I, and I probably get it from my mom, but um, I, I want everything to be a certain way all the time, and I want it all to be perfect, and I work so hard that it's perfect that I forget to rest, and I, for, I forget that I get tired because I'm a human, and that's when I need that intentional intimacy to plan out a time in the day to spend with the Lord, or I'm just going to get so tired that I'm going to get so irritable, and then I'm going to act different. So, so we, ha- we have to uh, spend time with the Lord when we get tired because we're not getting the breath that we need. When, you, when your body gets tired, let me, let me say this like this, our bodies react in a panic mode when we aren't getting enough air, right? We, we've, we've all experienced that when we're not breathing correctly, when we're not getting that breath and that life and that air in our bodies, we get in a panic mode because what? We can't breathe. And, and how come when we when, when we've acted different, we don't panic to get some breath. You know what I mean? When we're acting different, why don't we panic? We, we've gotten so comfortable with not being us that it just doesn't matter anymore. Oh, because cause who in here has ever heard the, that's just who I am. That, that's just who I am now. That, that, that's just me now. That, that's, just, that's just who I am. No, it's not. That's not who you are. Because, because once, once you get back into that intimacy, then what have we been talking about? You get that breath back into your life. You're no longer tired because you're breathing correctly. You're getting that spirit kiss. You're getting the one who breathed life in you back in you to live your life correctly. Um, and we, we need to turn to our Father and allow him to breathe his life back into us. And we need him to smother us. Man, I, I, I know it sounds weird, but I just want him to smother me. Um, we, we, were, we had a bonfire last night uh, for Committed, and everybody was like, you're smothering the fire, you're smothering the fire. But like, and it, it made me think, Lord, I, I just want you to smother me. Because you put so much stuff on top of that fire, it gets smothered. But I want the Lord to just put so much of himself on top of me that I'm smothered by him, and that all I can do is just breathe in him, and that's the only thing on top of me. Um, And I love this. Michael Todd, probably the second goat other than you, Papa, um, says it like this. There's no assistance at a distance. If you want the Lord to help you, but you're not being with him, there's no assistance without a distance. If if I'm all the way back here and in the back and I need help, but I'm not close to anyone, no one's going to come help me because no one knows that I need help. There's no assistance at a distance. You need to be getting deeper into the Father so that you can say, hey, I need help. And, and, and listen, he's so good that even if you are not asking for help, he's going to help you anyway because you're, you're spending that time with him. He knows in what situations and what times you need him. Um, so if we want to change, we have to be with the one who changed our lives in the first place. Um, I believe personally that you, you, you can't completely know Jesus in, unless you have had that personal um, revelation and awaken of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Holy Spirit has just completely opened your heart and your mind to him. And, and why, um, why are we not going to the person that changed your life in the first place to change you again? Because, because if, if, if you remember, I, I, I used to do this, I used to do that, this used to be my situation but he changed your life completely. You used to be a drug addict, but now you're sanctified and saved and you haven't touched drugs in 16 years. That's amazing. He changed your life. But why aren't we going back to him when we start acting different for him to change us again? We need to be who he's called us to be. But how are we going to know what that is if we don't spend the time with him to talk or listen to him? How, how, are, you, how are you supposed to be in that calling? How are you supposed to be that person if you aren't spending the time for him to teach you who you are? We have to spend time with the creator. And, and I'm sure that we all want to be better in some aspect of our lives. I, I want to be a better boyfriend. I want to be a better student. I want to be a better learner. We, we all have aspects of our lives where we want to be better. And I know that we want to be the us that the Lord has called us to be, but if, if you're not spending that time, you're not going to be able to progress. Um, and, and there's always room at improving you. And I think we, we really got to understand that. Um, 
there, there's always room to get better and there's always room to grow. Um, if we have the creator of the universe who is so multifaceted and just so big and, and we're only saying, this is me and I can't grow anymore, then, then you've honestly cut down the power of God because I know that Ephesians 3.20 tells us he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. So if we truly believe that, he's going he's gonna to take you. He's going to take this situation that you're in right now and whatever you think the best outcome could be, he's going to punch it down and he's going to explode it and he's going to skyrocket it into the atmosphere because he's just going to he's going to do so much with you and with your life that you can't even fathom or wrap your head around it. Um, Michaela, can you come play? I'm finishing up. The, the 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 whole thing that we've been talking about is is you. Um, and, and I think a lot of teachings today don't emphasize us. We're still human beings. Like, like we're still people that have feelings and that have a life. And, and, and we need to talk about us. We all struggle. We're all going through something. And, and, and I think that we just need to, to remind one another that we're you and, and that, that you have a purpose and that you have a calling and that you're loved. And, and I, that's what I wanted to do today. Uh, I just wanted to remind all of you guys that you are loved um, that you're called, that you're a son, and you have a purpose. And, and, and you being in the way of yourself, like, I, I know that's like kind of the whole thing I was talking about, but I, I want to encourage you um, this morning. When you're intimate with someone, you can rest. When you're intimate with the Father, you don't have to do anything. When you're intimate with the Father, all you have to do is rest, and He'll do the rest. So that, that's all you got to do. Um, when When... When you're with someone that you love, what do you do? You just rest with them. You don't have to be doing an activity all the time. You just love that person so much that just being in their presence is all you need. All you have to do is just rest. I love that. Just rest and, and he'll do the rest. Um, you don't, we, we don't have to do anything. There, there's no, there's, there's no uh, criteria. There's no checklist that we have to go down to change our lives. We're, we're not here to change our lives. We're here that Holy Spirit will change our lives for us, and then he'll use us to say, hey, look who changed my life, and we're going to change those people's lives as well. Um, as you stand, I'm, I'm wrapping up. We're getting ready to finish. I love that. Rest, and he'll do the rest. He'll, he'll change you when you rest with him. When you rest and spend time with Holy Spirit, he'll truly remind you of your identity, a king's kid. Your identity will show you who you are and where you're supposed to be and where you're supposed to be when you're not you. Does that make sense? When, when you're not yourself, when you're facing yourself, when you're, when you're just looking at yourself and, and just thinking, man, this is not who I want to be, he's going to point you back in the right direction. He is with, he, he's, he's the one who created you. And, and when, when we get the aspect of that he created me and that he's going to take care of me, you're going to be able to say, okay, I messed up. I, I'm in this situation. I'm looking at myself and I've done all these things this week, but thank God you created me because if you didn't create me, I wouldn't have you inside of me. I wouldn't know where to go. He, he's got a plan and, and he's got a purpose for you and, he, and he's going to take care of it. Um, let's pray and then we'll give it back to Papa. Uh, Holy Spirit, thank you so much for just this time that you have allowed us to be together uh, today. We love you so much. We thank you so much just for reminding us of who we are. Um, thank you that you have called us King's Kids. Thank you that we are children of the kingdom, that we have access to the King, that we can come to the throne room and sit at your feet and just sit on your lap and rest in you and say, Lord, I haven't been me lately. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And he says, don't worry about it. I've got it taken care of. He, he tells you, I love you. You're called. You're equipped to do something. And I have chosen you to be a representation of me on this earth because I love you. We thank you, Father. We love you, Father. I pray and ask that this helps someone. Help me a lot. Um, but uh, we just don't want it to be words that have just been spoken out into the atmosphere. 
We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to apply it to our lives and learn to live it out. Uh, We love you. We thank you. We praise you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.